first, I, I would like to, to thank uh, all the researchers. I found beautiful and, and I learned a lot. Uh, and I like very much the format to combine the researchers with the, um, our presentations and so on. So <clears throat> and <clears throat> I, would I would like to thank as well uh, the Volkswagen Wolfs uh, Foundation. And, but my friend, I would like to thank uh, my friend Christian Wertman. And I am very proud to be here and to be again here and to continue our collaboration and with Joseph as well. So I am going to, to talk about um, our experience in Urbam and as well part of the process has been a project that we have been doing with uh, Christian and other organizations, Rehabilitar la Montaña. <clears throat> and talking about uh, Medellin, uh, about conflict, risk, environment, and inclusion. <clears throat> so first, <clears throat> We must talk about some words that uh, in, in our process, we learn that some ideas and concepts uh, help, help us a lot and are ne completely necessary. When we talk about uh, urban processes and risk areas as well, we mainly talk about histories. So histor histories of people. So the idea of narrative, the idea of the history. So when we talk about urban processes as well, Sometimes we forgot that we are talking about personal histories. And the histories happens from dialogues and confidence as well. So, and it's impossible to develop processes without proximity, without um, the condition of uh, knowledge in the local condition as well, and to link different realities. And um, <clears throat> We, we, have, uh, we, we, we saw here in these days a lot of research and as well some actions, but we need more research that connect with actions. And the experience and the narratives belongs the connection with emotional uh, dreams, ambitions, with actions as well. And uh, the, last, the last word for me is the key, but is very difficult for all of us and the governments mainly. Time is impossible to develop processes, trust, narratives, and uh, transformation without enough time. And this is the main, the main, the main problem, but as well the main goal in, in, the, in all of these processes. So I'm not going to talk about Colombia. We, we saw the presentation this this <clears throat> this morning, but Medellin is, is located in a, in the middle of. Uh, of the mountains of Colombia, how you see, in a very complex valley and a very complex region. With uh, Medellin is a city of three, three hundred, uh, three thousand, three millions, five thousand inhabitants in the metropolitan area. So I will, I will pass fast for a previous process I, uh, when I was in the government with other people, and we lead the programs and the policy of social urbanism, trying to to develop an uh, integral and holistic view from urban transformation and education and culture as well in the areas of the northeast and northwest, the dark browns of the picture where the inequality and the casualties happens as well with some ideas behind. I'm not going to explain that, but <clears throat> in that time we develop a, a strategy in the government that combines public infrastructures, um, some uh, integral interventions with uh, education, um, uh, culture, and local services, and combines simultaneously accessibility working in the itineraries of the people that could link the public transport stations and recovery of the trust of the public space and the, st and the streets as well. So, <clears throat> working with some of the models of intervention in some creeks that used to be 100% informal and with a lot of risk conditions, trying to transform them, including the communities and trying to not relocate the people outside of the site to preserve the social cohesion. So those processes were very important for us and for the city as well, but 
were not enough to solve the problem. <clears throat> so at that time, the municipality and the municipality continue developing a lot of different strategies with this holistic view. But I must say that Medellin is, is still have the same challenge in inequality. So we improve a lot in some specific places, in some specific areas. But how you heard uh, Fernando Zapata, the challenge is huge and the communities is still waiting for a more white interventions. So at that time, we had a question. So what about the future? How can, because always the continuity of the government is fragile, how to expand the scale of the inter interventions and how we could produce and to, we could uh, go forward to uh, some questions that are very important. So the, one of the, one of the, it still be the problems and one of the main problems at that time and today as well, is this combination of risk, environment, people and inclusion. Of course, uh, with the infrastructure in the shadow as well. So, but these processes, uh, that we don't, we don't still have the enough answer that could solve the problem of the, of the scale of the city at that time. So we decide in, two, in 2011, we decide with the president of Eafit University to found URBAM, our center, the Center for Urban and Environmental Studies, trying to link those three, th those three words in relation with environment, infrastructure, and people and social cohesion, and trying to link the academy with the local initiatives and with the government. So we have been developing from, since that time many different works in, in Medellin and in, in our region, <clears throat> in different scales, with strategic planning, with local action that combines in different levels with data, etc. But one of the most beautiful things that happens at that time that I, I must say, <laughs> we met, I met Christian Werdman, uh, he was in Harvard at that time, and we start a process of collaboration. Um, and trying to solve some of the questions and in the upper part of the risk uh, uh, areas of Medellin. The hills of Medellin have become a battleground between nature and urbanization. We still have an active occupation in the upper boundary of the city. Uh, a lot of displacement, people that was, uh, were displaced from the rural areas still, still come to the city. And at that time, um, we start a, pro a project that uh, the first phase we call shifting ground, rehabilitar la ladera, and the second, rehabilitar la montaña. This process combines the two teams, our team in Medellin and uh, the three Christian team, in, first in Harvard and now in Leibniz, with Joseph and other researchers. And we combine our local knowledge and our local capacity, our proximity with their technology and their view. And we continue working, trying to develop some ideas for the upper part and the, this dynamic process of occupation that we don't have answers yet. Even the government doesn't have. And it's not a problem of Medellin, it's a problem of many Latin American cities and many cities in the world. So, <clears throat> We develop a research about the, the casualties in the metropolitan scale and mapping them, what happens in the history like, that relate landslides with casualties of the people and deaths in, in Medellin as well, and how the processes happen in occupation and talking with community as well. At that time, we, we start to work with Sumapaz and other organizations, and the Sumapaz is or the organization of uh, Fernando, was very difficult at that time, Fernando, isn't it? <laughs> we, we, we talk today, we are friends today. At that time, it was very difficult, and we developed a very uh, beautiful relation. So the question was, what should we do about it? Where should they go? How can the city prevent growth in the most dangerous areas? It's not drawing a line in the boundary, in, in the planning department, because the government doesn't have control of those processes. So we have to explore different, 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 and innovate in diff with different ideas. 
Instead of only reacting to growth, how can we anticipate it and prevent new homes from being constructed in risky areas? Instead of removing everyone at risk or just ignoring them, how can we provide safer living conditions? So we define a, a pathway in relation with the research and with some principles. Be community-based. So it's, it's, we always talk about community, but how to develop a process that is real in the reality community base. Be low cost that the community could work and could expand in time, but as well could be applied from different agents. And we need actions as well. We need uh, pilot projects. We need uh, to, uh, to develop trust in the process. And be flexible, of, of course, for the people as well. That is the last, uh, but the most important thing. So we develop uh, some eight steps. I am not going to explain in detail. And uh, this was interesting because we combine the capacity of our partners here in Germany in relation with the technology, the modulation, and the, of course, the graphic and the knowledge that they have. But as well, one of the most, the most important thing was we could develop since that time a dialogue from the community that permit us to reconstruct and reveal the processes of occupation and some logics that happen in the ground. And we map that, we, we developed some maps about those processes to learn how to apply and to use them. <clears throat> so, trying to, to incorporate uh, some uh, green infrastructure with bioengineering that open the door to the community to work with it. This is very important because if you are talking about community and how, and how to engage community, you have to think which kind of technology they could use in the process of a, 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 a risk reduction as well. So we develop a, a map and a manual of to, anti, uh, a, to anticipate and to mitigate in, differ, in different areas, prepare for natural disaster, discourage risky settlements, Stabilize slopes, water management, waste management, reassentamientos, re and infra infrastructure improvements as well. We define and we develop five pilot projects, and uh, I'm not going to explain them. I, you could see them outside. We have a, a book, and we could talk uh, later as well, and you could talk with Christian. But one of the most interesting things from my point of view was the process. Because this process teach us a lot in relation with the time. Because we start this process like a research, a partnership between the, the team of Christian and us in the university. And we, we, we could move the research to the planning department of the municipality to develop the second phase, the site study. So we, decide, we develop the site study for the municipality. But the site study define the pilot projects. But the municipality change, and they stop the support. So the, the third, we are in the third phase, and it's very important because we found some new partners. So all the time, the community, Sumapaz organization, is still be there. And it's the, more, the most powerful voice of the process as well. So in the third phase, we found 100 resilient cities agents in Medellin that uh, uh, became in love with the process, and they scale the project to the World Bank. And the World Bank decided to support the process to develop the pilot project. We, we are in this moment. And now we are looking uh, for the support of the municipality, how to link with the international organization, with the local organization, with the academy, and we are looking for the government now. So we hope, we hope, we don't know Christian, <laughs> we hope at the end of the year or the next, uh, the, the first months of the next uh, year, we start the process of collaboration with the uh, municipality. But the politics is the politics. But the money is there. So, This is not the same research, but is complementary. We look in Urbam a lot of 
partners that help us to develop tools. So the last week, we, we did a very beautiful workshop with the community of La Cruz on La Onda as well. We have a, a partner, in, with the, he is from Valparaíso, Chile. He has a Decivitet, it's a lab, and they, they, they develop a strategy with the drone lab, working with communities. So they, uh, we develop a, a strategy with the communities on La Onda on La Cruz, trying to use this tool like a play, but as well a way to understanding and to learn to the local, to the local, okay. <laughs> Two minutes, okay? <laughs> and uh, so we, we, map, we map with the community, with the kids, this tool, this tool is, very, is very beautiful because everybody wants to play but wants to learn about the territory. And we printed this, we printed these maps and start to locate with the community some specific sites. Uh, trying to develop a very detailed map of different, different problems. So to, to finish, I will be very fast. I will share two different processes. I am not going to explain them. We don't have time. That are, we are starting with the same idea, trying to anticipate problems and trying to develop information that to, to help develop to some processes that is, are going to develop in the future. The dialogue between two rivers is an exhibition that we did recently about two of our processes. It's a river in Medellin to the right and a river to the Atrato to the left. Two completely different problems, but the key for, for both of them are the dialogues and the representation, giving the, trying to develop a platform of communication and information with the community first, and then trying to link with governments. So the problem in Medellin is huge in relation with this part of the river because they are going to be relocated because a big infrastructure is going to cross the, the houses. So we developed a powerful voice that we wanted to, to support the next year in relation to a digital platform with the community, working with the community, trying to imagine how could be the transformation of the place. This is in Medellin. But in the Atrato, it's completely different, completely different communities. We have been working with indigenous communities and the Afro-Colombian communities trying to do the cartographies of social violence, cultural information of the territory. One of the most wonderful things is that the, the best way to communicate is very difficult to communicate with indigenous, but the best way is to give them a board. They draw in a detailed form all the life along the rivers and, 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 uh, and the basin of the river. So we map this reality in relation with, with culture, gastronomy, root of violence, and so on. And we, we wanted that this process continue in the future and, and help some other, other uh, realities. So those two books, books are outside and, and um, means our international collaboration, you could, the, the left one is the Rehabitar la Montaña, the process that we have been working with Christian Werdman and his team. And the right is uh, we translate the book of David Gouverneur. David is going to be the last today. He is very emotional and very good one, friend. <laughs> you see David there? And um, so we have been doing together different things as well. And so two last ideas. I, I was really happy for the wonderful news for this, uh, this uh, agency that the national government of Colombia is creating. The, the challenge is how to develop sustainable uh, process and proximity with communities as well and be pertinent, but this is very important because environment, inclusion as well, and our territories is the, the biggest challenge. And I would, I would like only to say thanks, and uh, as well to say thanks to Fernando. I am really happy that he is here. 
I, I, I must say that one of the most wonderful things that happens to us in Urban and in our team is that we develop some partnership with people and leaders like Fernando. We study together in our center, we work together in the city, we, we trust each other, but we have a lot of differences. And uh, I think we don't have answers, but we work for them as well. So I remember two or three words from the last presentations, dignity, love, and passion. And thank you, Fernando. Thank you.